Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo ThinkPad T14S and we have two of them on the desk today because they have different processor choices now. Uh, this one is powered by an AMD Ryzen processor and this one is powered by an Intel i5 chip. And these are pretty much the same laptop from a hardware and build standpoint. So it's going to be interesting to see how the current generation AMD chips stack up with the Intel versions. And I think you're going to be really intrigued by the performance differences here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that these are on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and check out what these two laptops are all about. Now, the price point on these will vary quite a bit based on the configurations that you choose. You can generally get started with either an AMD or an Intel version at around $1,100, give or take. And then depending on what you choose to put into your laptop, the price will go up from there. And there are a ton of options like we usually see on these ThinkPads. Now, the ones they sent us are probably in the $1,400 to $1,500 territory. The AMD version here on the right is powered by a Ryzen 7 Pro 4750U processor. That is an eight core chip with the new Ryzen graphics. It performs exceptionally well, as you'll see in a few minutes. It has 16 gigs of RAM. The RAM is not upgradable on either one of these. It is soldered on uh, and it has 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage. Uh, the Intel one here has an i5 processor. It is a 10310U. That is a quad core chip uh, and it has 16 gigs of RAM also 512 gigs of storage. Both have a 14 inch display and these are touch displays on this one, but they have non-touch ones available as well. The touch ones I believe are running at 300 nits of brightness and the non-touch ones are around 250. There's also a 500 nit version too, but it looks like they sent us the same displays on both. Although my AMD one here came equipped with a Windows Hello cam to let you in with facial recognition, and this one lacks that. The build quality is the same though on both. You've got a composite plastic that involves carbon fiber and plastics, and then the top of the lid and the bottom of the chassis are metal, a magnesium metal. It's very lightweight, both weigh at about 2.8 pounds or so, so not that heavy to carry around. And I'm just going to set the AMD one aside here for a moment so we can take a look at the ports and keyboard because for the most part, these are configured exactly the same. Uh, let's begin though with the keyboard. You've got your standard ThinkPad layout here. You've got these super nice keys, uh, very, very deep travel on them. Both are backlit. Just a real nice typing experience. And if you are a fan of ThinkPads, this will feel like the other ThinkPads you've owned throughout your life. Uh, like other ThinkPads, you've got the nub here to use as your mouse if you want. You've got some physical buttons here for that nub. And then you've got a click pad here as well. So you get the best of both worlds when it comes to input. Uh, you also have a fingerprint reader here on both that works very effectively and is very fast at recognizing who is logging in. Now the port selection on these laptops will look identical, but there is a very big difference between the Intel and the AMD here. And it doesn't look like there is one here just by looking at it. Uh, so both have a USB Type-C port here that they've labeled for power. That port though is a multi-purpose port, so it can do power in, but also display out and support data devices. So you could plug in a USB-C dock, for example, into either one of these things. And then next to it, we've got another USB-C port, but this is the big difference because the Intel version has a Thunderbolt 3 compatible USB-C port and the AMD version is just regular USB Type-C. And why this is significant is that the Intel version could support things like external GPUs. So if you wanted to have the laptop be more powerful when it's docked, you can plug in a desktop GPU through an enclosure into that Thunderbolt 3 port and make this a much more powerful workstation. You can't do that on the AMD version. That is a big distinction here between them on that port. And if you want to do that, the Intel is going to be your only option. 
Uh, but otherwise, the AMD uh, will perform better than the Intel in many of the things you're about to see in a few minutes. So there's always these trade-offs. And if you're wondering why they made an Intel version, it's probably because of that reason. It has the Thunderbolt 3 port. Uh, beyond that, though, the ports are the same as we work our way through. You've got a network adapter here for the ThinkPad networking dongle for Ethernet. You have a USB 3 port here, a standard USB-A port. You've got HDMI out on both. You got a headphone microphone jack here on both. And then on the other side, they also have the same fan exhaust, the same USB 3 port that can also charge your devices, and a couple of Kensington locks here for locking the laptops down on a desk. So it looks identical here on both, but again, there is always devils in the details, and in this case, the Thunderbolt 3 is a big distinction between the two. Now, when it comes to getting work done, we found that both versions perform quite well at doing the basics, as you would expect. Uh, so we're on the Intel one right now, browsing the web. The performance here is pretty much the same performance you'll experience on the AMD version. There's nothing that's really going to jump out at you when you're just doing word processing, Excel, and web browsing, and some YouTube watching. Uh, both were able to browse the web just fine. Both could load up Excel. Uh, both could play back YouTube videos at 60 frames per second without dropping frames. Altogether, they're performing like good high-end business laptops should perform. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test and we got very similar scores on that test. The Intel one came in at a score of 195 on version 1.0 of that test and 115.1 on version 2.0. The AMD version was pretty much within the margin of error coming in at 193.4 on version 1.0 and 112.9 on version 2.0. Now with virtual meetings being very important these days, both the Intel and AMD versions are just fine for Zoom and Google Meet and anything else you might be using. Uh, they do have a nice physical shutter here on the camera so you can block the camera physically with the little switch here at the top. Uh, this is a very useful feature so you don't have to put tape on the front of your laptop. When that shutter is engaged, you'll see a little orange a uh, piece of plastic here in front of the lens so you know that it's being blocked and then you can just flick it back over and expose the camera lens there. 720p on the webcam. I would like to start seeing business laptops get 1080p cameras for better visual quality just given how important these web meetings have become. But for what it is, it's just fine and it's on par with other devices in the industry. You've got a good range here on the display for adjustment and the laptop feels pretty balanced overall as you uh, move that display around as well. The keyboard doesn't kick up on you here as you make adjustments, so that is good. Uh, the speakers are on the bottom on both of them. They sound the same on both versions. Uh, it's not the best for music listening, but it's adequate. Good stereo separation. One speaker is here and the other one is here. The sound will vary though based on the surface the laptop is resting on. So a wooden desk like this one is going to sound different perhaps than a marble countertop or something. But of course you can attach headphones for better audio quality both physically and through Bluetooth. Now battery life on both of these is pretty similar on the surface. If you are looking for something to get through an entire workday within reason, both will accomplish that. I think it's definitely doable to get eight hours of the basics out of these things. And by the basics, I mean web browsing, some word processing and email uh, with the display brightness turned down, you should be okay. I did find though, when we tested a little bit more in depth that the Intel version does have a slight edge on battery life. You might get an extra hour or so out of the Intel one doing those tasks versus the AMD. Uh, but again, it's going to vary based on the configuration options you choose. If you go with that brighter display and leave it bright all day, that's going to impact battery life more significantly. But by and large, I think the Intel one is just tuned a little bit better for battery life, but both of these will get you through the whole day. Now, although there are many similarities between these laptops, they are not in the same league when it comes to higher end performance tasks, namely things like gaming and Photoshop and other graphically intensive operations. And what I want to do is begin on some benchmarks that really will demonstrate the very big performance difference here between the AMD and the Intel sibling. Let's start off with the 3 d Mark Slingshot benchmark test. This stresses both the GPU and the CPU. Uh, there we got a score of 16,701 on the AMD version, and the Intel version scored 8,608. 
and look at the difference in graphics performance. Test one, we got 100 frames per second on the AMD to the Intel's 45. 92 frames per second on the AMD on graphics test two to the Intel's 39. And the extra cores on the AMD delivered better CPU performance on the physics test uh, running at 28.5 on the AMD and 19.51 on the Intel. Let's take a look at another test called the 3D Mark Time Spy test. This one is more demanding, so you're going to see lower frame rates. But once again, the AMD one outperforms the Intel significantly. Uh, 1,099 to 453. Uh, you can see that those frame rates are not huge, at least on the two graphics tests, but uh, you can still see a very, very big difference in performance here between them. And that last score there at 19 frames per second bests the Intel by almost 10 frames. So altogether, uh, you're just going to see a very big performance gulf here. And I think if you don't need that Thunderbolt port, the AMD one is probably the one you're going to want to look at. So now let's take a look at some games running on this ThinkPad. And normally I never would recommend ThinkPads as game playing machines, but that recommendation is going to change a bit with the AMD one. This is the 2016 version of Doom running at 720p lowest settings. We're getting about 20 frames per second on Intel and close to 60, again at 720p on the AMD side. A huge difference here, and this is a very playable game on the AMD, and it's not on the Intel at the lowest settings. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, we've got another game coming up here in a second. This one is The Witcher 3. Again, uh, 720p lowest settings. The AMD is running at pretty much twice the speed. So you're getting about over 30 frames per second in the high 40s to low 50s on the AMD and a very slow 19 to 20 on the Intel side. That's a pretty big difference there, isn't it? Uh, if we take a look at Grand Theft Auto 5, the same thing, 720p lowest settings. Uh, we're getting about double the performance out of the AMD. And although the Intel has made a lot of strides over the years to get better performance, the AMD here is just better uh, at doing the graphics. And that's something that makes this actually a fairly good little gaming computer if you want to play some games along with your boring corporate stuff that you might be doing on it. And you can also turn the settings up a bit on the AMD version. This is Rocket League running at 1080p highest settings. And as you can see here, we've got a very playable 30 to 35 frames per second uh, with that graphic fidelity cranked up. Uh, also, you can see here that GTA 5 running at 1080p lowest settings, while not 60 frames per second, uh, is north of 30 and very playable at the laptop's native resolution. So again, uh, just a tremendous performance gap here between these two when it comes to demanding applications. And beyond games, you'll see better performance in Photoshop and doing some light video editing and that sort of thing. The AMD chip here just performs better and it costs about the same. And I think it's kind of a no brainer to look at the AMD one if you need that raw performance on the go versus the Intel. Uh, the Intel though, of course, has the ability to plug into that GPU when it's docked at your desk and that might be appealing for some, but I think for most, the AMD here is definitely going to have the edge. Now, as far as fan noise goes, you will hear those fans kick on when you are playing games and whatnot. The fan noise isn't bad on these. It's certainly lower than other laptops that are around this size that cost a little less, so it wasn't distracting. I also found that they're very good about keeping that fan off or at a very low level when you're doing the basics, like sitting here at idle or browsing the web or that sort of stuff. It's only when you really start pushing the hardware do you hear that fan kick in. Uh, we did run the 3D Mark stress test on both of these. Uh, that test measures how well the system performs when it's under sustained load. And on the AMD version, we got a score of 97.4%. That is a passing grade, meaning we won't see any real slowdown here. So that was good. It'll be pretty consistent across the board. It did, though, run a little bit hotter than the Intel version did. Uh, interestingly, the Intel version came just shy of a passing grade at 96.3%, but that is super close to the passing score of 97%. So I don't think you'll see too much drop off in performance when the Intel is under load versus the AMD. Both seem to be cooled quite efficiently. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is Linux compatibility. We booted up the latest version of Ubuntu. 
video was working just fine, the touch display worked, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and audio and all the other things I was hoping would work properly worked just fine on the AMD side. And that is consistent with what we've seen on some of the other Ryzen 4000 series processors, so no worry there. And we'll do a little jump cut here to the Intel version. Same performance here, everything was great. It was detecting all of the different components without any problems. Good performance out of this side as well. And altogether, I think no matter which of these laptops you choose, you can also choose the operating system that you might want to install on it. And it looks like Ubuntu seems to like both versions of the T14S. So like everyone else who's been looking at this pair of laptops, I must say the AMD version is the one to get. It just performs so much better than the Intel one, and you'll likely pay the same price or less for that performance depending on configuration. The Intel has the advantages in the area of a little better battery life, and of course the Thunderbolt 3 port. So if you do want that faster docked performance, then the Intel one might still be a contender, but for everything else here, the AMD is just the better machine, and that's the one that I would recommend to go with if you are looking for the T14S. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.